five families all said to him that we're all going to follow you. And I was at the clinic where I was going to do the, um, the IVF and um, Swami appeared to me. He said to me, don't do it, don't do it. And then I said to Swami, okay. And then he said, I will help you. Sairam, dear listeners, welcome to Sai Sol 100. Our guests today are Sister Javi and Brother Lochan Balkar, who's joining us from New Hyde Park, New York. Sairam, Sister Javi, Brother Lochan, thank you for joining. Sairam. We are from, we are both from Guyana. We were both born to Hindu parents and um, she had a more spiritual upbringing. Me, on the other hand, it was the opposite. So um, I was born to Hindu parents. Uh, my grandparents were very religious Hindus. And, um, but uh, as a child grow, uh, growing up, um, my father wanted us to know about our religion. And um, at that time, the Hindus or the Sanatan, the Sanatanist group, um, the pandits were not really teaching you anything, the mantras and the meaning and all that. So my father decided to send us to the Arsa Majis Mandir. Um, he said, you'll learn prayers, you'll learn about your religion, and um, you know, you'll learn a lot. So um, we started going to the Arsa Majis Mandir. I was very active in the women's group. Also, I was active in the Arya Virdal, the youth group. We had camps, we had um, seminars and um, a lot of religious activities. Even now I can still use that in my life, whatever, very disciplined and, uh, and all that. So then later on, um, we got married, I met him. <laughs> yeah, for, for me, um, it was quite different. I did not learn so much about Hinduism is because um, I had to leave home to attend school in the city. And um, I stayed with, with two of my aunts who are both Christians. So I, they attended church service and and my cousins they attended um, Sunday school, so I joined them. So, um, like I said, the opportunity was not there for me to learn anything about Hinduism. Now, um, I stayed with them for a while until I got married. Um, after we got married, we both started to attend the mandir. That's when I started to go to. So temple and, and mandirs, <laughs> you know. I got him to go. <laughs> then uh, um, what happened? Um, I think um, one Sunday, um, our guru, that was in 1985, our guru, he was the pandit. Um, he said to us that he's going to change and he's going to become Swami, Swami's devotee. He said we can continue doing what we are doing, but he's going to be a Swami's devotee. And right there and then, um, I don't know what happened. <laughs> um, we all, it was about five families. Um, we all decided to join him without knowing anything, anything about Swami. We have not heard about him. Um, there was no talk about him in Guyana, you know, so I don't know, but it just happened. So the pundit that you were following or uh, uh, regularly attending and being with became Swami's devotee and you blindly just said, okay, we will also become Swami's devotee. Because we you didn't know what that him. meant. Yes. We didn't know. Um, we trusted him. And so our... Our mandir, little mandir, a little shed became a Sai center. And it expanded and expanded. People had to stay, sit outside. It was a shed. It wasn't like a, an enclosed building. 
Wow. And it grew and grew and grew. And people were coming and coming every week, Thursday night, people will come. It ended up being so big. The crowd is so large that people had to sit outside. That this, that they extended the uh, share. Then they made and closed it and made it into um, a mandir. And um, so a lot of people were coming within a couple of years. We saw the center growing, Swami's work, of course. Mm -hmm. Anyway, after coming here, we started going to the Sai Center in New Hyde Park. And um, we learned a lot from the study circle and from each other. Also, um, later on, during our time going there, Swami also impacted our lives with many, many dreams. Very powerful one. Um, is the one when um, we don't have children. So we were trying, and then our last resort was in vitro fertilization. So, um, and I was getting older. I was like, okay, let's make one last try. So um, we decided to do that. And um, it was expensive. It was painful. It was It was not a good experience, but we did it. But the first time I did it, I I got pregnant and had a miscarriage. Then the second time I did it, it wasn't successful. So then we said, okay, we'll just let it go. Then a year later, I was thinking about if I should do it again, uh, because we really wanted children. And we prayed to Swami. And then um, one night I had a dream from Swami. He came to me in the dream, and I was at the clinic where I was going to do the, um, the IVF, and um, Swami appeared to me, and he, he said to me, don't do it, and then I said to Swami, okay, and then he said, I will help you, and he had, uh, he had Vibhuti in his hand, and then I said, Okay, but then afterwards I asked him about reincarnation. I said, Swami, tell me more about reincarnation. And he said, not now. And then he left. So then I thought to myself, um, what is this message? What does it mean? Does it mean I should continue or does it mean I shouldn't? But looking back now, I realized that when he said he'll help me, he really meant that no matter if you have children or you don't, there's a, a chosen path for all of us. And sometimes it's not having children. We all have different paths and um, Swami's in control and he knows everything. And looking back now, I know he had a different path for us. He had a different message for us that, you know, or whatever, our life has changed in many, many ways. The time that we have now to do Sewa, we probably would not have had the time. And so no matter what negative or positive stuff, we should accept it the same way and know that in every bad, there is also good. So, so that's my experience about that. And um, I'm thankful to Swami for that experience, and I have no regrets. I know he's guiding us. There was another dream. Well, both of us had. Um, it That was in 2001, I yes. believe. Yes. Um, the morning I got up and I said to her, that, you know what, I dreamt, I have something to tell you. And, and I dreamt Swami, and she said the same thing. I'm like, what is going on? I mean, he came here and he visited both of us. He was talking to both of us, you know. Um, in my dream, he said, he asked me, um, what do you want? I mean, so it's like, the only thing I could think of, I said, Swami, I need your blessings. And then she started to tell me that she also had a dream. Um, what was that dream? The same, I had, I dreamt Swami the same night and um, he told me, I, he also blessed me. Swami has blessed you with many, many dreams and guidances and especially at that crucial point of when you really wanted to have 
children and uh, he intervened and he said it in so, uh, clearly enough for you to recognize that is not the path that uh, that both of you have taken on um, and it's quite miraculous to kind of recognize the path he has weaved out for you and it's it was not something that we we choose it was during the pandemic um we used to look forward to feeding the homeless and involved in all the civil activities and most of the activities you know is outdoors so we couldn't go and we're home and everybody's home everything shut down you know what happened we started feeding cats at home they started to show up and they were just passed by and i felt so they look hungry my sister was already feeding cats at her place and um, one day she came and she said, I used to feed them food from me. And then she said, I have cat food. I'm going to give you some. And then we started putting food in front of her yard and in the yard. And so they would come and eat. And um, and, even, and I would every day I would go for a walk and I would see all these cats in the neighborhood. And they were all feral cats and they look hungry. I used to walk with food and feed them on the street. And then one day I went for a walk and um, it it was a Sunday evening in this parking lot. So there was nobody around, no working persons or anything. And I heard this cat crying. It wasn't a meowing. It was a crying. And then uh, when I heard the crying, I decided to go and check and see what's wrong. I walked in and there was this kitten. It's foot was stuck in the garbage. Um, it's a metal container. They had a metal container. Then I went there. His foot was already starting to get swollen because of the pain and the, the, the injury. So then I didn't know what to do. So I called him. I said, there's an injured cat here. What should we do? Then he, I decided, I, after I called him, I called my sister. And she has a medical background. And I said to her, um, you know, there's this cat, you know, stuck in this metal container. She said, I'll come. So she came with my niece. And then I recall Dr. Sharda. Um, she also helps. She feeds cats too, feral cats. And she helps us too. And, and she is so from, uh, she's from Flushing Sci Center? She's from Flushing yes. Sci Center, yes. So we called her and, um, and she said, FaceTime me. And then we showed her where the cat was and the leg. And then she told Ernest, uh, Locha and my husband, she told him what to do. And so then he eventually got the foot out. But it was already, it was bruised and a little swollen. Maybe the, the ligament was torn, I don't know. So we brought the, the kitten home and we took care of him. I named him, I named him Happy because um, he was so happy that we took care of him, you know, and eventually was we he, he got healed. We got him neutered and then we found him a home. Over the years after during COVID and um and even until now, um we we catch the kittens and um, socialize we them. them, socialize them, and we get get them adopted. Yeah. So a lot of rescue places wouldn't take them because they said they don't have foster homes for them for people to socialize them, but they'll take them after they socialize. Yeah. We build shelters and we use styrofoam containers and that makes it makes it so easy. And we'll take it to, to the place where the cats are. Like I would share with the, the member from Flushing, take it there and then during the winter months when it's when when there's a storm, we'll go and put food in the houses, make sure the houses are okay. And things like that. What we did, um, actually, her sister she works in 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 an industrial area where um, the comp there's a company next door to her company that's um, they res they collect items in big styrofoam con containers. It's about two feet by three feet, I believe, and it's about another maybe two feet deep. So that's ideal for for the cats, and I would collect them, bring them home, and make like a little hole in the front, put it in black bags, so it doesn't look so obvious in the, in the bushes, you know. Um, we also give um, the, the styrofoam containers to, to other cat 
um, people that look out take so care of, of feral cats in, in the neighborhood. Yeah. Yeah, so these yeah. containers were would have been thrown otherwise, right? Would and have been, been thrown out, yes. Reused for a very good purpose. Yes. And um, we put straw in them. So they were really winter homes for the cats, winter houses. We put straw in them. And so they were warm and dry during winter in the snow or rain. Everybody has their own path. And sometimes we try to weave into the typical path that is considered norm. And But Swami guides us otherwise. And your path is to take care of these so many, so many souls that are in need. So both of you get a chance to and the opportunity to love and care for these souls and then get them adopted and give them a loving home. That's the first okay. thing. That's the first thing I do in the morning. And, and it's the last thing I do. At night. At night. And these are not just the cats in your home, right? All the cats in all the, the homes. In the neighborhood that we have um one, two, our yard and two other places in our village. And I don't know how the cats know that we have food in the yard, but they show up. They sh like two weeks ago, a kitten showed up, like a little toddler, maybe three months, four months old, showed up. He's hungry, so I don't know they how they know, but they know there's food. They come, and there's always food in the yard and always food around and water. <laughs> Thank you for taking the time to share your journey. Um, of how you became Swami devotees and then to having moved to the United States and finding a home at current center, New Hyde Park. And then, of course, your growth, your spiritual growth with the, um, Swami's teachings during through study circle service and right. then the transitioning to full time service to cats and their well-being. And so these cats are very, very, yes. very blessed. It is. Yes. So, Brother Lochan, uh, Sister uh, Javi, thank you so much for joining Sai Soul 100 and sharing your beautiful story. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having us. And thank you, Swami, for making this possible. <laughs> thank you. Sai Ram, dear listeners, thank you for listening to Sai Soul 100 with Brother Lochan and Sister Javi. I'm Prabha Swaminathan. Until next time, Jai Sai Ram.